Hello everyone! The entire Paper Mario franchise, if that's what I can refer it to as, is quite an inconsistent collection of games. Now I do know there are Sticker Star and Color Splash fans, however each Paper Mario game, in my opinion, are consistently good like the Origami King, great like the original, phenomenal like the Thousand Year Door, or mediocre like Sticker Star and Color Splash. And yes, I do believe Paper Mario's superficial splash is just as mediocre as Sticker Star, but that topic's for another time. You've probably realised how I didn't state Super Paper Mario as a consistent game, as this is one paper adventure which lacks in consistency. However, I believe the game's inconsistency and overall randomness does wonders for Super Paper Mario. So today, I want to share my personal and opinionated thoughts on the highs and lows of Super Paper Mario, aka what's good and what's bad. Disclaimer, the game oblivionly has much more highs than lows, however I just want to share what risks and creative ideas paid off or didn't pay off in the execution of Super Paper Mario. This intro has been longer than usual, so without further delay, let's begin and spoilers I guess. Good, the switch between 2D and 3D. The main thing which causes Super Paper Mario to be Super Paper Mario is the main mechanic of switching from the second dimension and to the third dimension. This simple yet creative idea allows for creative puzzles and enjoyable exploration within the entire game. Sure, some areas may feel a bit shallow in 3D, However, it's an overall astounding creation which implies intricate depth within the game. Bad. Only Mario can go in 3D. In Super Paper Mario, there are four playable characters by the end of the adventure. Mario, Peach, Bowser and Luigi. Yet, only Mario can flip into 3D. As previously said, Flipping into 3D to solve puzzles and to get rewarded for exploration is a critical component within Super Paper Mario. If I cannot go into 3D with Peach, Bowser or Luigi, this forced me to play as Mario for a majority of my adventure, as I wanted to obtain every possible secret in the game, where a majority of secrets and rewards required the main gimmick of the player to flip every now and then into 3D and be rewarded. Good. Never knowing what to expect. If I had to describe what Super Paper Mario was in a single word, it would have to be unique, of course. My favourite part about Super Paper Mario is that every level and chapter is so distinct from one another in the best way possible, from one uh, causing the game to never feel bland, just like a loaf of bread, I know why I always make that example, which could never expire. From paying off a ruby debt to a dating sim to killing an innocent king who looks like a queen to a world being destroyed to Mario even being sent to the underworld, it really seems like Super Paper Mario is full of enjoyable surprises. Just like that time the game called a chocolate bar space food. Never saw that one coming. Bad. The gameplay of chapter 6-1. When I was playing through Super Paper Mario, I was like, oh boy, the game just keeps on getting better and better. I can't wait to see the next level. Well, this statement is mostly correct for me, as the game successfully continues to be more enjoyable as the further in one is within the game. Yet, my opinionated rule certainly does not apply to the abysmally horrific Chapter 6-1. Certainly my least favourite level within the game. Story wise, this is a phenomenal chapter overall, as the level portrays a dark tone of how the area you're in, the Sama Kingdom, will sh be shortly obliterated by the void. I believe the way they actually make it in chapter 6 allows to see what will actually happen to the Sama Kingdom and how everyone will just basically not be there anymore. On the other hand, the gameplay is exponentially tedious, repetitive and easy. Basically the gameplay is fight 1, Samurai. the player beats the Samurai in 5 to 10 seconds, 
Go to the next room and rinse and repeat for the next 19 Samurai. By the way, the player does not need to fight the last 5 Samurai due to story telling as they like head to the king and claim the pure heart before our world is destroyed. And yeah, chapter 6 one is undoubtedly my least favorite level in Super Paper Mario as a result of this glitz pit knockoff not being able to work well within a 2D platformer battle system and the samurai being even weaker than O Chunks doesn't even help the idea as well. Oh, and did I mention, there's a side quest later on in the game where the player must defeat all 100 Samurai guys. And I'm going to 100% this game. Oh no. Good. The entire plot, story, and dialogue. I wanted to fit this all together as they kind of all intertwine with each other. Even though I mentioned there being spoilers within this video, I don't really want to disclose a phenomenal plot within Super Paper Mario, and it is most probably my favorite story in any Mario game, period. This title may not seem so difficult to obtain, but if you believe there is basically no story or even lore in any Mario game, play Super Paper Mario, finish the game, and you'll know your statement was incorrect. However, I do believe the plot gets more enjoyable and intricate as the game progresses, especially once you reach, I'd say this story is quite bland in chapter 1 and 2, once you get to chapter 3 it picks up and then it picks up even more once you get to chapter 6, and then picks up even more once you get to chapter 8. Furthermore, the dialogue in Super Paper Mario is executed to a simple yet sophisticated manner. I personally adore how Super Paper Mario overall balances its humorous and dark moments, so the game won't be so dark for a Mario game, and not so humorous, otherwise I'd mo most likely obtain many unwanted illumination vibes. The plot, story, and dialogue of Super Paper Mario certainly pushes the boundaries for a typical Mario game, however the game's overall lore and interconnection of characters allows for entertaining dialogue and a coherent and a coherent plot. Bad. Too easy. Definitely my biggest gripe with Super Paper Mario and the thing I dislike the most. Now I don't mind playing a Mario game which is considered to be easy, such as New Super Mario Bros. 2, but Super Paper Mario is just a walk in the park when it comes to difficulty. Broken strategies, enemies mostly being one-shotted, and many bosses being defeated in a matter of three, not even three, like two minutes, all cause Super Paper Mario's lack in difficulty to be a lack in difficulty to be a significant problem throughout the entire adventure. Bowser is by far the main factor which further reduces the game's difficulty as his fire does double the damage of the player's current attack stat, just like his jump, whilst possessing no cooldown and immense range, with the range consistently being at the same distance. Unlike his neutral B move in Smash, this becomes extremely broken, and it really feels just like an exploit or something. In addition to most bosses being prone to attacks throughout the entire battle, causing them to be defeated in a matter of 2 minutes because you can just spam attacks and literally barely get hit, and chapter 1 enemies being in a chapter 5 level for no reason at all. This ultimately causes Super Paper Mario to overall be an extremely easy game. The only part of the game which I'd say wasn't easy was uh, the flip side and flop size pit of 100 trials. The flip side pit of 100 trials, it was meant to be hard, however, the difficulty was just alright. And the flop side pit of 100 trials, not gonna lie, it was difficult. However, I did still beat on my first try. So, not that difficult, but still quite difficult. Anyway, I better sh move on, I guess. Good. From good to great. As previously stated, Super Paper Mario starts off as a solid game, causing Super Paper Mario to surprisingly be one of the weak installments in the Mario franchise, in my opinion. And when I was playing through chapter 1 and 2, 
I was actually thinking Origami King could be better than this game. Fortunately, the implementations of wackier dialogue, more enjoyable levels, story which the players actually invested in, and more interesting exploration and discoveries as the game progresses, allow Super Paper Mario to surprisingly acquire some of the highest high points in the Mario franchise. Super Paper Mario specifically peaks during the phenomenal 10 out of 10 chapter 8. Surprisingly, chapter 8, the final chapter in the game, is my favorite level. As usually, I tend to like levels which are throughout, like, during the middle of the game. I never tend to like the first area or the last area in a Mario game for some weird reason. Where in chapter 8, anyway, the stakes are high, character development of characters such as Count Black and Tippy and even Dementia and Er Chunks is exceptional, with the platforming gameplay and puzzles being as enjoyable and as usual. And I forgot to m mention about the character development of Nastasia as well. And sort of maybe not really. If you're someone who started playing Super Paper Mario and is not a fan of the game, I'd suggest to keep on playing playing the game, as the overall game went from good in chapter 1, great in chapters 3 to 5, mediocre in chapter 6, excluding the plot, amazing in chapter 7, and absolutely excellent in chapter 8. And by the way, I'd say chapter 7, 3 is just good, but I'm not here to rank all the levels, I'm just here to say what chapters I like the most, which is basically all of them, but most like to least like. Bad. Playing with a Wii Remote. Originally, here's some backstory. Super Paper Mario was going to release on the Nintendo GameCube. Makes sense. Made, it was made in 2007. But then the game was planned to release on the brand new Nintendo console at the time. The Nintendo Wii. It's weird hearing that the Nintendo Wii was brand new. As well as a GameCube. Although the idea of Super Paper Mario releasing on the GameCube as well as the Wii was scrapped because the game would have probably only sold well on the Wii anyways, which is why it was only published on the Wii. Of course, Super Paper Mario had to utilize forced in motion controls and it is, as it is a Wii game, of course it needs that. It's just like an N64 game but in 2D. Motion controls, I mean an N64 game in 3D is just like a Wii game with motion controls. I know I had to clarify that. Motion controls were used for Bioin characters with Tippy or to perform action commands. The minigame area in Basement 2 of Flipside and the action commands performed before using basic attacking moves that uh, made the use of motion controls feel quite forced within the game. With most houses not even being in a 5x3 nor a 16x9 aspect ratio. It was kind of weird, even though the overall game, I believe, on my TV screen was in 5x3, not 16x9. In addition to every cutscene in Super Paper Mario being clearly created for a 4x3 aspect ratio, the game screams out, I'm not a Wii game, throughout the entire adventure. These factors listed above in no sort of way ruined my experience of playing Super Mario. Well, excluding Tippy, because when I play throughout the game, randomly Tippy's motion controls and just randomly activate, and it's kind of annoying. And it kind of, uh, kind of made me take a lot of useless hits during the Pit of a Hundred Child specifically. And another point of the game being on the Wii, which is a problem, is the controller. Well, you would assume the game to be compatible with a GameCube controller, right? Since it was going to be a GameCube game. No. Well, maybe that's because of motion controls. How about a Wii remote with a nunchuck that you can use motion controls with? But still no. How about a classic controller? No. Only a sole Wii remote held sideways. The main issue of playing with the Wii remote is a oh so tiny d-pad. This d-pad caused me to accidentally go through doors I didn't want to go through various times. 
and caused my poor Luigi Wiirimo to seem as though it was voice cracking for help the entire time as a result of my clunky feel and squeaky noises on the d-pad. Essentially, I just wanted to not play this game on a Wii remote, just like how I was thankful that I could play Mario Kart Wii with a nunchuck or classic controller. However, I can't play Super Mario with those controllers, only a Wii remote. And the game on a Wii remote, as there were not enough buttons, caused many inputs to be placed on this miniature d-pad of my Wii remote, causing it to be extremely frustrating. Anyway, I have some honourable mentions which I was a bit too lazy to talk about since this video is quite long compared to my standard length of a video, even though the scripted videos tend to be longer as the videos go on. Anyway, here's some other good and bad honourable mentions. Bad. Most recipes provided no purpose to obtain other than to complete the recipe list. Now this is mainly just a complaint I have because I got all the recipes, if you want you can check out that video. If you don't want then, yeah, your choice. Anyways, most recipes being useless was because these recipes either were exactly equivalent to other items slash recipes, which could be obtained through easier means, and the recipes were just as good or worse than the ingredients. Especially the Dillis recipes, like why would you go out of your way to combine these ingredients to make a recipe and combine that recipe with another recipe you make to get something which isn't even worth it besides for just selling but there are better ways to make money in the game than selling recipes. Anyway, on the good side, various characters which possess intricate and three-dimensional backstories, goals, personalities and distinct dialogue. Now this is something which I couldn't really explain so I just put it as an honourable mention. And I don't really want to spoil much about this game, it's just something which you should play without knowing, uh, which, without actually knowing the story before going into the game. You shouldn't just be spoiled about the story, it's just too good surprisingly. Bad. Just like the previous Paper Mario installments, attacking items are basically useless. As aside from the first chapter, the player can usually one-shot an enemy with a character or pixel attack which deals double the player's current attack stat. This also is a reason why the game is too easy, but mainly because of the bosses, not because of the enemies. Like It feels normal to one-shot enemies in a platformer game, but it doesn't feel normal to sometimes two-shot a boss, which yes I have done in Super Paper Mario. <laughs> Well, good. The choice of choosing up to 4 characters and up to 11 pixels with every character and pixel acquiring a special move or ability which they can only use. I liked how in the first two Paper Mario games there were multiple p partners but you could only play as Mario and just a partner. I like how in Super Paper Mario you can kind of customize a bit more in a, w in a sense I guess as you can choose what character you want out and you can choose what pixel you want out. And pixels are basically just a substitute for uh, what you may call partners. Also good, another good thing, the game never recycles their creative ideas. Unlike Super Mario 64's Dia Dia Docks. Therefore, this allows Super Mario to remain fresh and entertaining throughout the whole adventure. And also the game never uses this like particular formula to construct their game. It's just tossing out good ideas one by one. Like Super Mario 64, but they're not recycling their ideas, which is good. Besides a few parts of chapter 8, but that's because it's chapter 8. It's revisiting old mechanics you probably forgot about. Well, anyway, these were the various aspects I liked and disliked the most about Super Paper Mario. Overall, Super Paper Mario is an amazing Mario game, which, which is solely pulled back because of a few risks and innovative ideas that didn't pay off. If you want to know what I gave, what I will give Super Paper Mario out of 10, 
as is it as this is kind of a review video but not really because I don't really know how to properly format a review video yet and I only wanted to make a review video because I wanted to talk about good and bad aspects of a game that's why I just made this video instead um uh, overall out of 10 what would I give Super Paper Mario on a scale of 1 to 10 or 0 to 10 I don't know I'd probably give it an 8 out of 10 overall but this isn't saying that the game is throughout the entire venture an 8 out of 10. There are many parts of the game which feel like 10 out of 10 moments. Many parts of the game. However, sadly, there are a few parts of the game which I really just don't like. Like, just like chapter 1. <laughs> because that is extremely bland. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked here. Fortunately, creative ideas and improved concepts such as the abundant amount of characters, the creative mechanics of flipping, the balance between witty and dark dialogue, playable characters and pixels which are clearly distinct from one another, complex themes, interesting areas, a sophisticated journey, an intense climax, and a plot which undoubtedly exceeds what a, typ what a typical Mario game attempts to accomplish, creates a game, not even a Mario game, just a game, which is a blast to play through as Super Paper Mario transformed a flat 2D adventure game into something which is way more third dimensional than what any 3D Mario game could ever accomplish. I know there are a few risks which didn't pay off throughout Super Paper Mario, however everything good about the game certainly outweighed anything bad about the game. And it's fine to take some risks in a Mario game as most of these risks tend to pay off, and it doesn't matter anyway, it's Mario, people are going to buy it. <laughs> anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video, as I had to write a script which is 7.5 pages long. Why? Because I need to practice my writing skills. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and don't forget, this is my opinion. I'd like to thank anyone who has subscribed to me, or even anyone who watched through this entire video as I pro probably know only like, probably no one actually watched through this entire video. Yeah, probably. Maybe that one person. Thank you to that one person who watched through this entire video. Anyway, that'll be it for now, so thanks for watching. See you guys later, and bye, bye.